वेलकम टू ईटी ऑटो रिटेल मीट 2023 एंड आर डिस्कशन टॉपिक इज कस्टमर एक्सपीरियंस ड्राइविंग कस्टमर एक्सपीरियंस टू बी टू बूस्ट व्हीकल सेल्स एंड वी गॉट अ वेरी वेरी डिस्टिंग्विश्ड पैनल टुडे आई मीन इट्स इफ हैव टू काउंट द एक्सपीरियंस एंड द क्वालिटी एंड द क्वांटिटी ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस इट्स फेनोमेनल सो वील बी टॉकिंग ऑन कस्टमर एक्सपीरियंस एंड इट्स जस्ट नॉट अबाउट कस्टमर एक्सपीरियंस एज मेनी फैसेट्स टू इट एंड वन थिंग विच आई लाइक टू से इज वेन वी टॉकिंग कस्टमर एक्सपीरियंस initially it was said i mean that if this was a myth or it was a reality at two decades back that sales and customer experience the twain don't meet customer experience is good to have but sales volume is more important to have but i think unlike mark twain he said the east is east and west is west never to initial meet it has met now so there is a clear understanding whether it's in manufacturers whether it's in dealers whether customers the quality of customer experience defines the trajectory of the company its products and services so that's an important part of it and we will be discussing on it the second part is that uh, customer experience may mean different to different segments there are certain basic principles in customer experience which will be across segments whether two wheelers small commercial vehicles heavy commercial vehicles tractors passenger vehicles but there is still there there's a say thing global but act local there are certain nuances i'm sure the com- commercial application will be very different from uh, in terms of the customer experience then compared to an individual customer so this is something we should discuss so i'll just introduce the distinguished panel uh, with us and uh, we have uh, a lot of people who are there mr uday narang is there he is the should i call you md or should i call you co promoter of omega psyche i'm just a disruptor you can go as a disruptor he is a person who worked <laughs> so disruptor officer so this is a new definition which is there so i can only say about him that he had his education abroad he worked a l- many years abroad but returned back to india i just want to ask one thing were you inspired by swadesh sharukh khan to return to india or by your own inspiration not at all i i was um, i i just quickly say i was i was sitting in my um office in mount street in london about 10 years ago uh, okay. and i wanted to make a change okay. and i think that night i just said enough of this world of hedge fund okay. and i need to come back and make a difference okay. and that's what's driving me every day okay good good so that's um, into you then we have mr uh, 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 mr yogesh mathur is there uh, he represents uh, hmsi and uh, he's the director marketing and sales they are big in this country i mean how many plants you have currently we have got four plants Achha. and uh, in terms of our business operations we have got two different okay. verticals one is the red wing uh-huh. vertical uh-huh. which is primarily focused on the commuter bike and then uh-huh. we have got the big wing vertical okay. which focuses more than 350 cc up to 1800 cc okay good so somebody was talking about premium to mass premium so we so, have got entire range so okay so yogesh is a lifer as i would call it in the hmsi you been more two decades Uh, more than 20 uh, plus years. There used years. to be old movie of Hemant Kumar, 20 years before, 20 years later. So you, you are 20 years before, so it's like log cabin to White House, huh? <laughs> <laughs> which is there. He's hiding. Yeah. And then we have Mr. Hardeep Barar. Uh, Mr. Hardeep has been part of the four wheeler industry, and uh, he's worked as a very rich experience across functions, sales, marketing, and uh, he's driving the fortunes of uh, Kia Motors. He's heading the marketing sales operations. So you, you will always find him. You know. One thing which I always look at Hardeep is how does he look so young? I mean, a lot of people would think he's a marriageable age, but he's not. I mean, he's got children who would be marriageable age, but that's a part of it. And he's a big marathon runner, so that's one thing. Uh, so you, great to have him with him, but uh, very cool, calm. I've known him for a long time, so I have a lot of fond memories of my session with him. And then we have Mr. Jyoti Malhotra. He's the MD of Volvo Cars, so he's moved from the passenger vehicles to the premium thing and. Uh, him also i know for a long time and jyoti also i can say always smiling i never seen him under pressure so i don't know whether where it comes from but that's jyoti for you and uh, volvo cars i mean premium cars has its own challenges set so we'll be discussing on that part of it and then navin soni uh, i call him mera bachcha hai because he's a junior of my college in engineering college i shouldn't be saying that so he's had a very rich experience and across the spectrum of uh, automobile I mean, he's handled things like public relations. Even he's handled marketing sales too. And now he's the MD for uh, Lexus and uh, a very, very aspirational brand, upper end brand. So I don't know. We'll put you on head on, both of you together, to part of it. Eh? And then there is Sudhir Malhotra. Uh, he's in Renault. Very rich experience again in the four wheel industry. And uh, one unique thing about him is that he's handled after sales service before he came to sales. 
and marketing head which is there so he understands that voice of the customer because 80% of the time the customer interface is with with the dealer or with the with the company in after sales part of it and then last but not the least is devashish and devashish is in suzuki suzuki two wheelers and uh, he's also got a rich experience uh, suzuki has been there for the last 5 years where is but a lot of things he's doing and he's also straddling the segment so so we have uh, two people virtually from the same segment uh, hmsi and uh, suzuki but i think we are to- not talking of companies product features and last not the least we have mr arun subramaniam as i said which is there and uh, he will be also discussing on certain things so we'll start the topic right away uh first thing which i want to discuss and i want a short rejoinder from each one of you on this if i have to take the last 4 years the last 3 4 years and in the last 3 4 years one was this period of the phase of uh, uh, which you had the covid and then this entire concept of digitization and also this entire concept of customer moving in and we'll start from you this time what are you think is the main things which have changed in customer experience in the last 3 4 years from your perspective from your segment my experience in the last 4 years especially post covid mm-hmm. has been an accelerated digitization accelerated digitization now i might take is that uh, it was by default and got sent mm-hmm. uh, maybe for the wrong reasons mm-hmm. to begin with but uh, covid uh, forced the world to accept digitization much more faster than it would have in an organic manner and we in the auto space also had to we i remember our own company we started with mm. uh, we were one of the few to start things like uh, what we call the suzuki at your doorstep program primarily trying to reach customers digitally everybody was trying to reach uh, reaching customers digitally and we developed the skill and that was a skill that this industry basically was yeah. not strong with right so that is one clear gain and that is the, so been the biggest of you to reach out to the customer yeah to reach like, out to the customer like without more. physically being able to reach out okay so that was a great learning for most automotive uh, companies in two wheelers especially also and especially two generally there is a conception in two wheelers digitization is more a passenger vehicle game it's not yeah. so your uh, that myth needs to be exploded it's digitization yeah, not not possible. not really not okay. really it is as much Okay, so that's today. the one thing. Anything second? Any big thing which you think? Uh, no, that that is that no, no. kind of sums up, sums up my my take so on. So they will have his own sets of challenges when you come to this. Yeah, we'll because we will discuss on the challenges also, we'll which is there. Yeah. Uh, coming to you, Sudhir, uh, Devshi talked of digitization, which yeah. I'm sure is also an integral part true, of it. True, true, true. But I'll just take it forward. What were the challenges which came with digitization uh, in terms of customer experience? so uh, if i see you know it is i i agree with uh, devashish about digitization i would say it's democratization and at that point in time with covid what we saw was digitization not just limited to gen, gen z's or the younger mm-hmm. people it's gone up mm-hmm. so uh, a writing review is not just limited to to the younger uh, population it's gone up to every age group mm-hmm. so what comes with digitization and post covid was also the expectation of a turnaround time from Ooh. from every stakeholder mm-hmm. now the challenge that it has posed to the industry per se is a very fast change on digitization and old way of handling the customer mm-hmm. so each stakeholder has to progress okay. fast to catch up to the pace of digitization so, so that one he responds immediately mm-hmm. you know if i am on a let's say a digital lead i need a, a, a response right away the unit of currency is changing Absolutely. Absolutely. Is, it so is it's hours, it's, it's minutes. It's minutes. Mm-hmm. So it came down to hours. It's minutes. So now. that's a big challenge. It's a big. And challenge. then you have to combine the two. It's it's not that everything's changed to digitization. Right. It is that uh, brick and mortar is still available. It is, and, and that's still important. Finally, part. you know, right now at least for us, there is still one visit of the customer to the showroom, mm-hmm. and he wants to still look and feel uh, the final purchase because it's it's something which he'll go to own for mm-hmm. a, spe- a quite a big period of his lifetime, mm-hmm. and hence. Uh, meeting this this kind of a uh, expectation of an immediate response to something which should take an adequate explanation around the product and the service i think that's the dichotomy of the frontliners mm. which is to be handled okay uh, that's a that's a challenge that so uh, that's a challenge which is there 
come to Naveen, your customer, I mean, you handled Toyota, I mean, which is, I won't call it real premium, it, it was mass, mass premium, yeah. but now you are with uh, Lexus, which is the same group. Your customer is anyway more evolved. Sure. Because they have already done cars, they probably have more than one car in their family. Their purchase decision is, could be more rational. Probably purchasing power is higher. So, the dynamics of digitization, or which you are saying, with the we are talking of two, three things. One is how the digitization is handled. Because he said there's a challenge in digitization. It looks very easy that digitization makes life easy. It's not as easy as Amazon. Right. From a premium customer point of view, how does it work? And so, what are the challenges there? Yeah, sure. Um, thank your you. minimum uh, value of your vehicle is what? 70, 70 lakhs. 70 lakhs, yeah. which is there. Okay. So, uh, my point is that uh, whether it is uh, the biggest challenge uh, mm -hmm. uh, for uh, us is all of us in this room are manufacturing uh, based companies, you know. Mm -hmm. For us to handle data, mm -hmm. big data, mm -hmm. is, is itself uh, going to be a big task and a change of mindset mm -hmm. because you're not dealing with a face and recognition, you're dealing with a number. Mm -hmm. And then how do you kind of distinguish that from one from the other? Mm -hmm. uh, when you meet customers physically, you know, you understand them, mm -hmm. you, you can relate to them, mm -hmm. you can observe them, etc, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. But digitization, which was uh, in a way thrust on the industry, both for uh, every, every segment of the market, mm -hmm. COVID in that way was a disruptor, was an accelerator, was an incubator, mm -hmm. and now it's kind of guiding uh, businesses mm -hmm. towards uh, more and more digitization. Uh, it has happened to all all players in the industry that uh, they had to learn a lot of new things. Mm -hmm. But the good thing about uh, this is that if you are able to understand, uh, decode this language, mm -hmm. so to say, then I think you have a much better understanding of uh, a rather actual footprint to a digital footprint of a mm -hmm. customer if you are able to you know, catch okay. him there. And then you can understand so much more um, and the DX to CX uh, journey mm -hmm. can be much more uh, mm -hmm. better defined. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, coming to you, uh, uh, Uday, they've talked about digitization and they've stopped, start, started from two wheelers to cars to premium. But I'm just trying to focus on commercial where it's, where it's a business, it's a B2B. And it's on a segment which is earning every day and sometimes they're not the large players. So how does the customer experience, and they live, breathe the product day in and day out. Unlike four wheelers you have, the utilization is very low. So from your perspective, and you come from a very different experience from US, I mean, where it's all about hedge funds and there's a lot of us has evolved, although a lot of people say that digitization is stronger in India than what's in USA. What is your insight which is there? And this is still a growing segment. And we are talking of EV. One is EV and that is also commercial and that is also, I'd say, more mass end. So looking at the challenge from that perspective, how does it start? Look, I think, uh, you know, COVID changed everything. Um, I think what it's done, and I'm dealing with customers that are, uh, you know, between, uh, you know, four to 12 lakhs, anything above that, you know, I think there's not going to be scale. Um, I think the customers today are so, what, what, what technology, what digitization, they are so knowledgeable. This and is you're talking of the customer who's also in the in the commercial segment. Yes, very the, much. The own vehicle owner. They're, 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 exa they're fleet owners, they're leasing. Okay. I mean, you know, I'm also working on three-wheeler passenger, which is a huge okay. demand. Um, you know, we're working on some sort of trucks that can be used for passenger, uh, you know, delivery, but primarily commercial. Uh, COVID has changed the, no you know, the, the knowledge base. Um, you know, the customers know about the competition, they know about the technology, about battery tech, about powertrains, about what works and doesn't work, why a certain product is better. I have never seen in the entire world the customer information and knowledge. I think even in the, and, I, and I'm amazed at what uh, COVID has done. You know, it felt like Everybody, and you know, I'm more concerned about Savasakuru uh, uh, I'm not concerned about the uh, the top guys, right? Because in order to bring scale on EV, you have to, and those customers really are knowledgeable, um, specifically more in the South um, and the West than in the North, all right? 
We're having this panel discussion north. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but what I want to say is India is diverse, right? I mean, please. I mean, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I look at India as one. I, I don't, I don't really uh, discriminate between the north. You have to be politically correct, also. You yeah, know? <laughs> I, I definitely have. No, but okay. but the customers have learned so much, and the customers understand the product. Um, and I'll be honest with you, they will hammer you. I mean, if you do not, uh, I think in the EV industry, what is what we can all learn from all of you, and which I, I learn every time, is service, service, and service. I think in the commercial sector, if a customer, he or she, um, you know, is is so dependent on earnings, like you said, an, an a Lexus or or or, or a Volvo, um, you know, or or a, you know, high end scooter, is not going to be so dependent. But that man and woman uh, is going to be dependent on earnings on that, and I think. COVID has accelerated yeah. the knowledge base of our customers. And you know what? We're the third, uh, you know, we were the largest largest population in the world. We, we've got young people, right? We, we put the damn thing on the moon at $74 million when we can't even produce a Bollywood movie, a Hollywood movie at one half that price. So this young generation, and you know, I'm not talking about the highly educated, even the people down there, mm -hmm. man, they are, edu they are knowing about how okay. and what the product is. So great. Uh, so, you know, coming to Yogesh, uh, you know, you are, and we'll take the question further. One thing, how much of your leads as such today would be digital? And you're a total mass product across the network, across length breadth, where the unit of currency is not a district, it's a tehsil. Yeah, so if you look at uh, both urban and rural. All divide, combined. All put together, it will be somewhere close to around, uh, roughly around 10% to 12%. Okay. 10 to 12%, which is yeah. there. This is and urban would be how much and rural would be how much? So urban would be close to around twenty percent and. Uh, but this is in inquiry form. But in terms of people going out to understand, uh, I mean to understand about the vehicle or to get knowledge, yeah. that also would be that's a different thing. Yeah. So what it has happened is that uh, post COVID we have seen that all those customers who come to the physical, that is physical dealership, mm -hmm. close to sixty percent of them. Have already researched the product. So that that has been digital journey has started in some yes, way. Yes. It may not be a digital lead in that sense. Yes, but, but they had said, actually started doing the okay. homework in terms okay. of understanding the product. So one thing I just want to understand, you know, you, as I mentioned, your number of outlets. How many outlets you have in the country? Six thousand plus. So if you have six thousand outlets and you are talking of three things. Yeah. One is digital a customer since he's going through the digital journey, so he's knowledgeable. So the salesman is not the only one who will give him knowledge. He's already come with some his own knowledge. Yes. And he's talking from a different level. Correct. So that is one part. Second is it puts a pressure on salesman because yes. he's not the repository of knowledge. Yeah. So that's another thing. And how do you train them? And third is you're trying to, I mean, combine in customer experience, the soft skills, which yeah. are traditional, which still you need to require. Because I still believe in India, the Atiti Devo Bhava works better. Correct. And then with the entire digital tools, whether it in terms of digital inquiries, how what is the how do you manage the two three things? Yeah. Because it's it's a complexity. It's yeah. a it's a it's I wouldn't call it a jugalbandi. It is more complex than the jugalbandi. Yeah. So I would like to summarize that um, now India has already landed on the moon, mm -hmm. and so is the customer today. He's landed so on the moon already. Also on the moon, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, the you know people who were behind to take that particular you know task to moon mm -hmm. is ISRO. So we divide the overall journey of these customers into this form of ISRO. Mm. So one is post-COVID, we have understood that there is an information overload. So information overdose, overdose or overload. Overdose. So okay. information is available. They say in Hindi, hoti hai. Ati buri hoti hai. So yeah. most of the people are actually going on board. As I yeah. said, 60% of the people are actually going towards the digital yeah. in terms of understanding what is the product. Second is in terms of the speed. Speed is one thing which most of the youngsters today are looking at in terms mm. of finding out mm. the solutions for them. Mm. And R belongs to the research. They are already doing a lot of research mm. before they actually move into physical you know, dealership. Mm. So all these things are already there. So that means there is a footprint of those customers available on the digital space. Mm. And we as a marketer who are sitting here has an opportunity mm. to net these customers. Mm. So we have to look at in terms of devising our strategy in such a way that we are able to pull them out. Mm. So we need to take that landscape. 
Now coming to your point is in terms of that since we have 6000 plus net and especially most of them belongs to the second tier 2 or tier 3 kind of market wherein digital has actually not reached. But we have seen that even in the rural areas people start using the video content very Achha, much. Okay. So they are all in terms of understanding the contents of the video which is mm. there and we need to look at in terms of providing that solutions to them. But on the other front, since COVID stopped in terms of movement of our people to train them. Mm. So we had to move towards the e-learning platform. So okay, today so, so in the sales and service, all our modules are converted into so digital good. modes. So, so that's the thing which is, so it's a, it's a more challenge. Now coming to you, uh, you've been in various facets of this business. I mean, you handled customer satisfaction directly also in your previous assignment. You handled marketing, you handled dealer development, and now you handle sales and marketing. Edge. Now there, I'm looking at two, three challenges. One is a lot of action is happening outside the showroom. And when I say outside the showroom, I'm talking physical outside the showroom. So there is one is inside the showroom and one is outside the showroom. Then it is happening in air, digital, and there's a salesman. And then the products, the technical features of the product or the unique USPs. So if somebody told me as an engineer or to MBA to explain electronic brake distribution system and ABS and how it combines, it's not an easy job. I mean, it looks very easy to say, but if somebody is in a conversation with you, and then this is this challenge on the salesperson, how to combine it, and then he has to combine this thing. So this would actually, if I would look at it, it would be a, a somebody said it's a disruptor. It could be a damager for customer experience because so many forces acting on the person who is interacting with the customer. So from your experience, what has happened on that? Is it a boon challenge or it's something you're coping with? So uh, you're right. Uh, so I, I think we spoke about the sales guys who are selling uh, to the consumer. Unfortunately, the person who's selling to the consumer is the least educated in the entire product, in the entire chain. Okay. So it's very important uh, and you can't expect uh, that person to remember everything. Uh, you need to provide them tools. And very importantly, you know, what we emphasize on is how quickly you can retrieve the tool. Because if consumer asks the question, yes, you have, you know, microseconds to go so and... like KBC, your time starts now. Exactly. Because you, you, can't, seconds you, you can't tell the consumer, uh. okay, sir, please wait, let me, you know, take it out. So you have to make the module in such a way that at a click of a button, he should know where should I go. So what we try and, to do... And then the customer can ask very different questions in different ways. Exactly. So it's not a standardized expected question. Yeah. So you need to create a repository of things, of particular product in such a way that, you know, he has everything in one shot. So if he wants to understand what is ABS or EBD or hill control, <laughs> uh, you have a single point where you can showcase all the videos. So even if he's not able to explain and we tell them that you don't need to take ownership on you, you say, okay, sir, you would like to understand, make short videos of which are about... Uh, 15 to 30 seconds where you can show to the consumer and he's able to understand what it means because sometimes they are not able to articulate it so well so and similarly if you want to have comparisons you need to have very quick comparisons. so um, uh, Yogesh spoke about speed how but that was in a different context but here the speed is how quickly you can retrieve the data inform the consumer so you need to make uh, but you have to have the interactivity also. Exactly. It's not just about just downloading exactly. the data. Yeah, yeah. but so you need a combination of both, which is so, uh, very very important. So is it a isn't it a very challenging task? Yes, of course it is. <laughs> so so you have to uh, you have to know two people here. You need to understand the the capability of your uh, sales consultant, uh, and you need to understand your consumer what kind of questions they ask, mm -hmm. and you need to have a regular. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. regular interaction with the uh, mm -hmm. sales consultant to understand what are their pain points. Mm -hmm. So we uh, launched a new variant of one of our products and we found that, you know, there are so many questions, how do you deal with it? And we have about uh, two, uh, 200 odd uh, consultants who are handling that variant. So uh, earlier what was happening, they would go to their uh, sales manager, sales manager will come to area manager, area manager will come to so regional manager that, that it, and they come to, you know, the product team. So we said, okay, let's cut the chain. We created a WhatsApp group with this 200 people and there is a person in the head office who is sitting there and there are questions coming and he's answering okay, directly okay. to so them. So cutting the chain. Which is cutting the, the chain and making sure that, you know, you reach so, directly to, uh, you know, the, the person who's answering. What you think is very interesting. I was yeah. talking to somebody in Madara Courts. They said yeah. they make groups of tailors. Yeah. If tailors any problem with the Madara Courts uh, threads and their other things, they could have yeah. solutions. Jyoti, you have in coming to, you know, your thing, you handled... I would say mass-based cars and also mass-to-premium cars 
vehicles and now you're in total of a premium segment what i i hear about and i may be wrong you are a better person to say the profile of customers coming to luxury is not a homogeneous profile now you know used to people used to think that people who wear suits or people who are industrious they buy luxury cars and there's also the impression you know i was told by a salesman that i have to in a, a salesman of a luxury car in gurgaon that i need two people who can speak haryanvi <laughs> not they they don't know no english but they need her yani because those are guys who got money so one is this challenge of keeping the brand image up because you can't dilute mnc's and especially the premium vehicles are very particular the brand salience and the brand second is you still have to understand the local dynamics and third even local is not homogeneous it's heterogeneous and fourth is the technology disruption you getting evs and other things so how do you do it in that and the person who's coming and buying a 1 cr car the average ticket size is what 1 cr uh, 80 lakhs 80 lakhs so his expectations and his aspirations and the things which he gets is much much higher so how what is the challenge which is unique and you handled the other segments even in this segment so what is different here yeah so i think uh, first thing as everybody is saying uh, with covid coming lot lot of things changed but one key th- differentiation i would say from a uh, luxury uh, car perspective is uh, as you rightly said people have this mindset of yolo you only live once okay. so everybody is coming to buy zindagi na milegi dobara zindagi na milegi dobara so they are really looking at that if i earlier we were all saying okay i will buy a car of so much when i get there yeah. now they want to do it now yeah. they don't want to wait for tomorrow that's a big change which oh, has happened so and because i think if you see even in mass market we keep hearing now the average uh, the car sale is increasing in 20 lakh plus mm. i think same applies in luxury i think people are the aspirations Apparently. they want to fulfill their aspirations now that's a big change irrespective of what which hetero whether your customer is coming from rural that's or that's from that's wherever that's so that's so across across that's, that's across that that i think has got very deeply into customer psyche that i think covid taught us this that i think we saw it so up close in india that you never know what's happening going to happen tomorrow Mm. that's a big change mm. on the other hand i would say from a luxury car perspective one of the key things i would say a customer expectation whether irrespective of what language he speaks or from where which background he comes from luxury customers expectation is personalization mm. and i think digitalization has helped in a big way mm. because a customer wants and what what does really i personalization mean i would say one is transparency mm. whether it is the price or the offer or the features being told to the individual i think they want transparency second is i think convenience whether you talk in terms of speed or in terms of i think what they want they get what they really want to mm-hmm. they are ready to put money mm-hmm. but they want what they want mm-hmm. and the another i think factor within this is uh, and i think which is also propelled by uh, i think with covid and all is there is a i think big change in environmental consciousness mm-hmm. in our customers we see that I think four years back, customers, I think will I will just show that they they care, but now they really care. I think that the sort of discussions that happen with with the uh, with the various stakeholders and I think especially customers between is is a big change. So I think these are I would say some key things which I think are important and as a uh, as a company we need to take care. How do we take care of consumer experience when the expectations are on this front? When customer is looking at personalization, how do you address that? So and it. that's that's. very very difficult so, to achieve yeah so coming to arun uh, you did a startup i mean you were worked in the corporate world and now you you run a, a very successful startup uh, in which focuses on customers only because your focus has been more on the bfsi area the banking finance but the customer is the same True. that's the customer is the same so two things one is what is your experience in this entire journey how technology and that hard skills and soft skills are being integrated from in the other industry because today we learn not from the same industry we learn from different industries and second any specific question you would like to ask the panelists oh, sure. for a perspective so i leave it to you yeah so i think we deal with frontline sales teams and i mean we've been like we started with bfsi and we have about like 7 lakh people on the frontline doing it and the problem that we see remains the same which is that your customer today knows more about the product than probably the guy on the field and uh, and one of the biggest inputs that goes to the person on the field is about the product mm. but a lot of times you know the customer's expectation is that hey can you help me relate this product to my need 
and uh, the issue that we face and i'm sure, uh, you know and i want to understand if that's similar with auto i'm sure it is with luxury products but also with thing is that uh, the household from which a salesperson comes is very different from the household from which that's a customer big, comes which means the ability for this salesperson to relate to the issues going on with the customers in terms of the needs that this product is trying to solve is always second hand or third hand i mean i've never experienced it first hand when i'm trying to sell a specific product to you and uh, and a lot of times you've seen most people in sales take up sales because they got no other job it's like the last job i've done my degree kuch na kuch karna hai chalo sales mein naukri lag gaya and it, it's and the churn is also fairly high so given that this, this is the audience that we have in sales and customers today have especially in the last 4 5 years uh, are doing their own research and especially when you talk about video content people Uh, you know what we have seen is view a lot of reviews even for financial products mm-hmm. i mean har, har ek ka koi review hota hai you review this and you say you know i saw that this product has this feature i saw that ye to kaam nahi karta etc so people come in with their own opinions and uh, and this is one thing that we have seen across customers uh, you know companies facing where how am i able to make this sales person relate to the customer because uh, and a customer today today is not ready to give a lot of chance to the sales person i mean i already come in knowing that uh, you know i know the product and if you are not able to kind of uh, engage with me mm-hmm. and have a knowledgeable conversation people are ready to walk away and move on is what we are seeing with the rest of the industry when i say rest of the industries you know we work with uh, banking insurance pharma a uh, pharma it's slightly different of course consumer durables where you know people have walk ins and you talk about this so customers today are ready to walk out and one of the challenges that we are trying to address is Uh, to see how do you bridge the gap and i wanted to understand if you see the profile of the sales person vis-a-vis vis- the profile of a customer walking in and the inability to relate to the problems mm-hmm. is that something that you folks face or you think your sales guys are facing more than just having the right information at the right time is this a challenge what he said is this a challenge yeah it is uh, especially for uh, in the industries that we operate in uh, the guy needs to empathize empathize is the word uh, that probably will summarize what he is trying to say Uh, but at the same time i think there are ways and means to overcome these things the training is a very important tool uh, in terms of explaining these things and their technology as some of them have mentioned uh, can come very handy and these things uh, mm, see you when when we are sitting and designing a product we should know who the end customer is right what is his expectation what is his lifestyle what does he want in uh, this car uh, so from that point of view i think there is a fairly good analysis done back end now how to marry that with the real life data you know that's that's the challenge uh, going forward again i say i think there is a big opportunity that uh, i mean the 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 groundwork may have been laid by covid but there's a big opportunity for us uh, being from the manufacturing industry to learn this tact of uh, handling big data that i think is the crucial part and if if you are able to master and de learn all your uh, existing uh, norms in which you try and fit in every every guest that walks in um and understand each one of them i totally agree that personalization is the way to go this thing can be actually done very successfully the moment you have uh, how should i say um, uh, a fairly good understanding of how to kind of use technology uh, whether it is ai ml whatever to to kind of make sure that you have a better insight of a, a particular guest who walks in and then it life becomes very very simple so maybe i'll just add to that so the question is i understand there's a lot of information and insights that we might have let's say as people sitting in this room uh, the question that i'm uh, trying to address is that we are not really trying to educate this guy on the showroom but the idea is to educate the customer through this person who the customer is interacting with and initially you know you would have like a master trainer trainer you go down then you would have a separate training for let's say dealer sales managers dealer showroom managers etc etc so the question so is I even if we have the I data is it getting if translated if i have to take a formula you know used to do, read in school transmission losses equal to i square r you know india is famous for its transmission losses although chandrayaan doesn't show that but generally we are famous so deshish from your yeah. perspective how do you reduce those transmission losses and this is a question before we get to the yeah. next part we start crystal gazing now yeah. so a short so answer of that two parts one is transmission loss uh, digitization surely helps in cutting transmission loss right when it comes to trailing it's in cutting transmission loss right when it comes to trailing yogesh and hardeep spoke about speed right the speed at which the sales person has to respond 
because the guy who's buying today wants for example when we are communicating on media he wants short reels he does not want to spend 20 seconds anymore 5 seconds probably or 8 seconds similarly when the salesman is telling him stuff very limited time but what i don't agree with is the premise with which we start that he comes from a different background and the buyer comes from a different background uh if i have to take a point what uday mentioned in the beginning was and that is where digitization has changed the entire landscape in our country is it's a big equalizer social equalizer right today the guy in the countryside is 10 times more aware than what he was just about 10 years back so that gap is not so much the gap may be in his spending power mm -hmm. but that gap is not as much in his aspirations mm -hmm. and that aspiration is fueling this gdp okay. today so, so we need to change this paradigm and i have two industries that i have experienced and this is my own take is commercial vehicles and two wheelers i have found that the person who is selling the product mm. may be knowing less but he is as aspirational as the buyer right when a transporter rides on his small rickety bus bade hoke volvo banungi that is the that is the buyer that is the buyer's aspiration the same aspiration applies to the guy who sold him the bus aage ja ke fleet fleet owner banunga right that i think uh, i mean i'll take it from that uh, is, there uh, i experienced uh, that i'm sorry uh, on the two in the two wheeler salesman also because they are also two wheeler riders themselves and users so they can relate okay. so that is not so much an issue mm -hmm. they can relate they can also relate with an aspiration he wants to move up he does not want to ride a 100 cc motorcycle anymore he is aspiration is to move up like his buyer's aspiration also is to move up the chain and that we are seeing in the data in the industry data segment shifting and everything else right so i think we should not differentiate too much psychographics are similar ude one challenge uh, see one thing one is that you're talking to a segment owner which he says that you can relate to but you're also trying in your own way to disrupt that industry in a manner that you're talking about different technology I, they say it's still the trip of the proverbial iceberg so when you have to suppose 10 years 5 years later we when we say we are doing crystal gazing what do you see is the biggest challenge opportunity we'll see how, how to go get over this but what do you see is the biggest two challenges for this I want to look at the challenge statement first. Uh, first of all, Arunji, I'm um, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna raise this. Um, the buyer is not a he only she. Okay, okay, okay. So please, he, she, I'm, so that's I'm very big thing. on uh, and please don't. I'm 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 one of the biggest supporters of Nari even, Shakti. Even in small commercial vehicles. Yes, okay, yes. Okay. And I think so I stand corrected. Uh, please, I think I think we need to we need 48 percent of this country mm -hmm. is women, and you see the young women of this country. Mm -hmm. It's a power. Mm -hmm. and i think at least for me okay. those consumers need to be those days of a he mm -hmm. making a decision are long gone in my view um let me come back to you so you know i should use the term which is being used in cricket batter not ah, batsman bilkul sir i think that would be good um i think that look um uh, uh, i'm just passionate about nari shakti so please okay, uh, please speak. please don't take the wrong way um i think that um you know from what i see and let me let me start with the biggest the biggest challenge yeah challenge. i'm going to come back on the challenge look i think um rome wasn't built in one day i think we want everything today but i'll tell you what without a shadow of a doubt that alternate energy will rule the challenge to me are a couple of things the first challenge when we started journey was financing financing is now available okay i run on fixed fast charging swap 15 minute I think what we need to do specifically to get volume a two tier 2 3 4 cities is charging infra okay clearly the the problem that we have is do we have sufficient charging infra i think 
in, in tier one cities, we'll get it. And in some of the bigger tier two cities, we will also get it. But it's the tier three and the four cities. Where the um, main market is. Yeah, where the market, I mean, Morbi, uh, Gujarat. I never, I never even heard of Morbi, Gujarat in my life. I'm on Sunday there opening up our, one of our dealerships. I think what I want to do is really, uh, and Baraji, you might know it, but I just, I'm from a guy from outside some of these places I've never even heard of or been. But um, I would say the charging infrastructure needs to be focused on. We've got to find the solution. I see what Kia is doing or Hyundai is doing. I'm a big, big fan. I mean, they've, they've made a decision. About seven years ago, I was in the headquarters in Korea and I was meeting some of the top guys and they said, you know, electric is gonna be, and you see what they've done. So my point is five to 10 years from now, if we could put the charging infrastructure, whether it is for EVs, whether it is for hydrogen, that is what's gonna bring, see for me, scale. Scale is what matters. See the two and the three wheelers, the game's there. I don't think there's going to be any co any conversation. But for the four wheelers, and specifically what I want to see is on the passenger side, more and more four wheelers, EV. And and I think, you know, I think we've got all the players here who can do it, right? And I think the charging infrastructure sets up, we're ready for it. So charging is the biggest constraint. I, I think so. I think so. And, and money needs to go and into And that's that. the biggest uh, bottleneck in terms of customer uh, Making the shift at the moment still people. Who I think are range, anxiety, range anxiety, range right? anxiety. Range anxiety mean, is a combination. Everybody's concerned. I think there's also you know there's battery uh, cell technology, but I think that's that can be managed. Okay. I really think if we can put that range anxiety, mm -hmm. if Baraji or if any of these people here say I can do five to seven hundred kilometers, that game's over. Okay. Now Lexus, a Volvo, which they already have, they're already coming out. They are at a different price point. I yeah, think. and and so so, but for the scale, we've got. But see, I don't mind the big boys and the girls. I'm always going to bring the girls in here because it's not just the he. The point is that we bring that charging infra. I think everybody's ready for it. At least the second vehicle, okay, okay. it should be there. Now coming to Sudhir, uh, one of the challenges, and we're talking the challenges now, irrespective of the technology. And we, one side, we go to Manpower, whether we like it or not. Attracting, if you talk to dealerships, getting Manpower is a big challenge. Because in India, there's a saying that there is no unemployment. There's either employable or unemployable. And sometimes people don't have the patience to make unemployable people employable. That's one area, in spite of all the technology upgradations. So one side, what do you think are the, if there were two challenges you have to put in this journey of customer experience, because customer aspirations rising. Complexity of the world is getting more. Digitization is making to make them to expect a faster response. So, from your perspective, what are the two big challenges today? Because once we get the challenges clear, then we'll say what is the solution to it. When you ask challenges, it's manpower or well, I'm saying whatever to... challenges you see the journey of customer experience, which is mm -hmm. there. I'm talking of the challenge. You may see. I may think manpower, but you have a own take no, on it. Uh, I'll, I'll go back to the discussions that we had today. You know, when we, we talk about the customer experience or the journey of the customer experience, mm. now customer having been more informed mm. than the person who's going to get him engaged. Mm. The expectations of the customer at a, are at a level mm. where we now need to uh, address them by the intermediary who's the mm. sales or the after sales team in this case. And that's one big challenge. How to keep his expectation set uh, or the experience delivered to his expectation mm -hmm. set. His knowledge level, his understanding level are at a given point in time is very high because when he reaches out to a dealer, his, he's full, he's actually saturated with the knowledge and mm -hmm. information that he has. And his questions from there are, are very uh, significantly require, you know, the, they require a very significant, uh, significantly evolved response. Mm. So that's one point which we are delving deeper into how to address this and mm. part of it comes back from technology. Mm. Uh, Hardeep mentioned about it, how they are taking it in, in training. So part of it comes from technology. Mm. Uh, and uh, the other part, which is about uh, going back again to the responses, uh, how do we, with all the information that we have got, how do we respond to a customer? Now, when I say a customer, it's not just a customer, it's also a profile of a customer. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, Naveen talked about big data and uh, analyzing this information that is, that is huge, mm -hmm. not wasting time on analysis because the mm -hmm. amount of information is so high now mm -hmm. that a lot of time it gets into analyzing the information. Mm -hmm. So we need to be very clear mm -hmm. about 
the right set of data to come to the right conclusions. Otherwise, the, the data itself can leave, you know, lead us into a maze of uh, information mm. that would be difficult to uh, mm. take us to the right level mm. of uh, diagnosis. Mm. So big data, analyzing it to a right customer profile or a customer, and then addressing the needs is the other part, which is a big challenge today. Uh, Yugesh, coming to you, uh, we talked of, you know, one is the challenge, this urban rural challenge. But, you know, in any in industry, and we know, once you get to mass volumes, there's a challenge, a regional challenge also, the mindset. I was just talking to uh, uh, Oday and we were saying, why do the EVs, the outer rickshaw EVs don't sell in South? I mean, there must be something different to it. The country is the same. The laws are similar. So, there's a regional also mindsets which are there, which probably in international markets, probably there's more homogeneity. That's what my assumption is. So, how do you, and with this further combined, how does it make the time, what are the type of challenges which a manufacturer has? See, we understand, uh, especially in the two-wheeler business, yeah. we have got a seasonality of the business, mm. which is completely different across all the geographies. Mm. So, for example, today we are sitting here and there is a big festival which is already going in Kerala. Kerala. And it will end by Tamil Nadu, which will happen in maybe January. So from this time till maybe six, next six months, we are all equipped. So the challenge for us is in terms of, you know, adapting all our communication in such a way that we can reach out to those people. So media mix also has to be prepared in such a way that we are able to reach out to the customers. And then training the people also in such a way with their own language because if we create any Just of the content question, does the profile of the person who's buying also changes in terms in when the festival season comes or it's yes. the same profile throughout the year it, it changes so that's another challenge yes that also changes so during this particular time not even the profile of the customers even the choice of the product also changes completely mm -hmm. so during diwali period for example in our case commuter segment 100 cc motorcycles or maybe the commuter entry segment level. entry level bike that becomes very, very high. And during June, July period, it is primarily school, college, opening time. Mm -hmm. So, scooter sales become very okay, high. Okay, so that's also so, the seasonality, which so is not seasonality, only festival based. Festivals, mm -hmm. timing also make a lot of difference and challenges to the overall industry. I remember the term, you know, in marketing industry, Tara, Utgaya, Tara, Dubgaya. Yes. Kaha Tara, Kaun, Dubgaya, because Tara's, the stars remain the same in the galaxy, but that's the way it is yeah. understood in the Indian so, ecosystem. Adik Maas Chal Raya. Adik Maas and Savan and all so, those know, things are as also more, going on. more we are modernizing, the more we <laughs> get back to the old concepts. <laughs> Look at a luxury car maker head eh, talking that Savan is going on. Double Savan is going on. That's the uniqueness and the complexity. Imagine the dealership position which is there. So that, that, That's very interesting because uh, you know, we're talking to MDF star and he's like, COVID is kind of work well for us. And I was like, why? Because March shut down. And he's like, most of our major surgeries happen in April, May. Mm. Because that's like school holidays. And because there are no surgeries now, you know, they're kind of not having to spend a lot in... I didn't expect a parallel with uh, scooter <laughs> sales. So, so it's a very interesting thing which is there. Yeah, so, yeah it just continues. Sorry, you were saying something. So one was this entire regional and even in the region, different times which are there. Yes. Does this happen? Just a short question. In commercial, does this, this, region, this uh, seasonal thing, does it play? I'll, 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 I'll tell you what, right now, in the EV business, uh, every vehicle which is good uh, is selling. I, I don't think there is a demand problem. It's a supply. So yes, there are, you know, Onam and, you know, I mean, I've got to know all these recently, all of these holidays. I will tell you, at this moment, there is a demand surge that is coming. Um, so I, I think that'll come down a road, but uh, in India, man, I'm a, I mean, I, you know, I, my home is Switzerland. I get bored going to Switzerland. The energy of this So country, whenever you have the house available, tell me, I'll go to Switzerland. <laughs> go to Switzerland. It's always empty. I'm always in India. Um, this is really, um, that cyclical uh, holiday will be there. Uh, people said, Ghaniyane Bikengi January me. Up to, it's like Christmas all, I'm sorry, Diwali all the way around. Um, I don't see that as in, you know, selling is not a problem. So, so commercial, you're saying, but, you know, I'll play the devil's advocate. Sure. 
I will say that your volumes are still small. Yes, so, yes. so in India, you know, when yes. the demand supplies gap and these people bear yes. it out, yes. the demand looks five times more. Yes. The moment you produce twenty percent, you start running helter yes. skelter. So that's so a, that, that's okay. a valid that's a valid point. That's, that's a, a reality point. in India. But also. but abhi abhi sirf trailer shuru hai. Ab ab Bollywood ki kafi chize quote kar rahe hain. Trailer shuru. Abhi movie shuru nahi hui hai. Par abhi Delhi dure hai thodi. Ah, bilkul bilkul bilkul. Okay, uh, coming to Bra. Uh, uh, so the challenge you know one we talked of the challenge one is the manpower challenge which is clearly there uh the other is you know you are trying to combine in your products features which probably the, even the premium cars don't have or they have today i can't think you know a one crore car this feature you can always quibble on the ki this feature is more advanced there but all the features you have so how does this person who's a i mean a 10th class or guys how does he cope with it even it's not a question even you have the tools If you to speak something confidently on something, even if you have all the tools and the same, so that's one part of it. And second part it is this complexity of models. One model is catering to a slightly mass base. The same model, the other variant is catering to different customer. So this also within the same model, I'm not talking the same products. How do you? I mean, is you do you consider a challenge or there's some other challenge which you think? If suppose you are head or heart, you wake up sleepless night. You don't have a sleepless night because you do a marathon runner, so you'll get a good sleep. but what gives you a sleepless nights what are two concerns which you have so firstly uh, you know uh, let's speak about the number of variants that you have in a product so in a way uh, it was it's very positive and you know i think kia started uh, in in the segment having large number of uh, trims for example but it make life of the salesman more difficult yeah so yeah chain. so there are both positives and negatives the positive is that consumer gets a variant at every 70 75000 rupees so to give you an example you know we one of our largest selling cars starts at 10 uh, 11 lakhs and it goes up to 20 lakhs in this range of 9 lakhs we have 19 trims mm. so you know when there is a waiting it, it is fine consumer can pick and choose but when it slows down mm. to manage the inventory of 19 trims mm. is become a hugely difficult task 19 trims into six colors the matrix is you are planning uh, uh, 118 120 variants and even if your uh, plan is for i remember the v shantara movie do aankhe 12 hath yeah, they say right. do aankhe 100 yeah that's hmm? right that should be the movie title name of the movie yeah. now so so you know forecasting this is it, it, it's a huge challenge when uh, you know things are ex stock and suddenly you say uh, you know you produce as per the best of your knowledge and suddenly somebody comes up and says sir i'm not getting blue colors and i'm losing customers right so this this becomes a challenge so it has both uh, good and bad things because if you have too much of gap between the price points for a customer to jump from one trim to another it takes time so it has the challenges on both the side but i think you have to live with it you have to make your forecasting model better you have to be more in touch with the ground and also the manufacturing has to be very quick on their feet i think the flexibility is said than done yeah but uh, sometimes you know in terms of colors they are more flexible yes in terms of trims it is difficult because the uh the lead times are longer so i think it has both their pluses and minuses and we have to kind of optimize and make sure that you know we are supplying cars as per uh, what the demand is and you have to listen more to your you know, people on the ground what kind of bookings they are getting uh, so you have to have a different tools but i think the forecasting is the toughest thing mm-hmm. while we all talk about it i i think it's the uh, toughest thing to do uh, so, uh, uh yeah, yeah. forecasting models you know <laughs> designed in the most developed countries in the field in india yeah. so That's anybody right. can crack yeah. it yeah 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 happened that the only hope uh, coming to jyoti uh, luxury cars see one is your mncs have a certain i'm not saying yes any mncs but luxury mncs will have a certain mindset that this is the model this is a technology this is thing and then somehow you have to go with that because technologies can't change overnight and then you have the customers over a different mindset and the profile of the customer is different from your job from your assignment when you look at it what are the two biggest challenges you see for customer experience which can become bottlenecks so i think i am i'll talk purely from a luxury car perspective mm. uh, i think in if you talk purely from a consumer experience from a luxury car uh, i think customers don't like this uh, discussion to be very transactional and unfortunately the way we have sort of set up this whole industry in india it is very very transactional so means at showroom is typically now i think all of us said customer is doing a lot of research online customer already knows much more than uh, uh, sort of uh, the this guy who is selling the car so in terms of product features the knowledge is already there mm. probably customer is coming there for seeking a transactions okay 
finally closing a deal i want to pay this much and what are you going to offer mm-hmm. and how do we change that i think in a luxury customer actually doesn't like it the reality is we try to do uh, behave like that but but in reality a customer does not like it customer would like transparency as i said earlier mm-hmm. customer would say okay i am given a price and hence the biggest change i think that we need in our industry specifically i am maybe it will apply to everyone is how can we change the role of a showroom from transactional to more experiential ah that's the biggest thing. that's very very important and i think the way to go for that i think digitalization can be of a great help today if we go to buy a shirt i think you don't do much of a transaction you go and buy an arrow shirt or any other shirt if there is a, a sort of a stock pile which is available on 50% discount that's it if you buy mistake a shirt is lying on the other side the customer will tell sorry sir I, it was lying on the wrong stock but actually it is at full price and we believe because it is it shows on the system that is how it is how can we uh, get there because i think if we really need to ensure that customer uh, really wants to buy because a luxury car is a very privileged the sort of price at which we deal so and i think as a solution lies in uh, going online because then you have a you take away the transaction from <clears throat> the salesman to system system deciding second and i think and i think what navin also said big data so much of data is available it's not about the people whom we sell the car people who are coming even inquiring a car is we we, we can learn a lot from there so uh, from if you see from that perspective uh, that's the reason i think if you are see we are talking about going direct because it's about direct relationship it is not about direct selling because when we can capture the data directly by manufacturer i think we can we can really use it well when it is coming through a dealership i think it gets diluted if we don't get the the real i think big data has to be captured in the real essence and somehow it gets diluted and i think i see the big change as you said in india i think uh, is about how do we go about this change where we uh, can uh, go to a direct model ensuring that we create a win win for everyone so see from a let's say in a direct but model for a luxury car to go in direct model is somewhat simpler but for a mass based with so many variants network yeah it i think, I, I think is a challenge it, yeah it it could be but i'm saying i think i'm talking from more from my perspective but i think it will ultimately apply to everyone in some sense because in direct model one of the key things is uh, you're talking about uh, let's say color see typically the way we are i think all of us in whether it's two wheeler four wheeler commercial vehicle Uh, what we work on is a stock and sell model a dealership k- keeps a stock of inventory That's and it tries to sell from there so if he does not have a black color he will try to the sell the white which he has or that dealer has so i think what about the consumer experience then we don't know what sort of conversation is happening on floor between a sales person and a buyer because it is very very uh sort of focused on what you have and you want to try to sell it the moment you go direct i think you have a, even if you have so many variants if it is centrally available there are better probability that you will try to sell what is available okay. and we can make it work look it from purely from consumer experience yeah, perspective yeah, consumer and view. giving a, a false story rather than offering it the right thing i think this is where the power of data really plays in and i think uh, and hence i think there is a need to shift a center of gravity specifically for managing data from dealer to i think to on manufacturer and i think that is with the power of direct okay uh, arun uh, would you like to say anything from you heard a lot of comments on the challenges from your perspective of from the industry which you have uh, you know i don't know what happens on the ground uh, and even a lot of systems that are there in place you know and and every industry has a lead management system uh, you know your crm etc Uh, for the most part there's nothing in it for the guy on the field it's like a chore it's like you know at the end of the day i'll give it and i'll give it to some data entry person to do it because uh, you know i know that the need analysis form that's g- given by my company mm-hmm. and every company or every product has a need analysis form is not the way the customer starts because if you have like 10 questions customer might already you know mentally have made up their mind on seven they'll say no no let's go to question eight okay. even if you're going to follow a certain process so Uh, a very regimented approach has never worked and for the guy on the ground it's like theek hai yaar kuch mang raha hai chalo main bhar ke de deta hu so a lot of times that data is never uh, you know care. come and uh, coming to this forecast i think the question again is the same thing so your forecast input information is almost always junk 
so how are you really going to forecast because the first information you have is your actual sale and everything beyond that is not 100% correct or not even like 50% correct in terms of the customer ask and that's where i think uh, that that's a challenge that we see across where okay. how are you really understanding what's happening on the ground okay uh, now we'll come to the rapid fire round and uh, i'll just juggle it any question can come to anybody so I, i'm not here to treat you like what uh, uh, Karan Johar treated Haridik Pandey at K. Rahul and virtually disrupted their career. That's not my objective and I don't think you are smart enough not to fall under the trap even. They were not that smart in that sense. Uh, we are taking the each of these challenges and we are trying to get a mind how to, what is the solution for it. And the whole linkage is customer experience to more sales and ultimately a virtue cycle. So, we will start with you. Uh, who should we start first with? Uday, you have broad shoulders, we can start with you. Huh? Absolutely, bring okay. it on. Okay, but we'll take one topic only per person. Yeah. Two things, one of the challenge, I'll make a challenge statement, whether it's there or not, but you to consider it a challenge statement. Is auto industry, and I'm talking at the dealership end, at every end, but dealership end, is not attracting, is not an aspirational industry for people to join? Absolutely not. Many so, people want to be part okay, of that. Okay, but I'll take the statement. Okay. This is a statement which is there. What do you think two things to be done that more people join the auto retail because the quality if, if there's more people who are not by default. As somebody said they join by default. They join by design. What are two things need to be done? I think, I think this is an, uh, for, for me, um, you know, when, you, when, when I heard that the, the, the sales guys are the lowest sales guys or girls are the lowest level. I don't believe in that. I think um, having, uh, you know, a futuristic business where uh, technology and automobiles can work together will lead um, to a bright future for any business. I think also when owners feel that it's their brand, I think really when I, and from my experience, I opened about 180, I, I learned this from Bridge Mohanji, I open up every dealership myself. It's been a pain in the ass, but I love it. I get the touch with the customer. When an owner, he or she, and I'm telling you, I see many she's in there, uh, uh, you know, maybe because they own a Piaggio brand and they want mine and so they put in the wife's name, that's possible. But I think having that ownership of the brand, feeling um, like in Spanish, I say La Familia, when they feel La Familia, Man, you cannot beat that. And so I think... The ownership has to have that uh, passion, you know, because if he gets, he'll attract the right. The dealer feels that this is, they're going to make a difference. I think you've got success. Okay, good. So good. So we've got two sessions, how to drive this, you know, the so-called, the talent crunch or the talent, less attraction of talent. These are the two solutions. Uh, Rar, can we come to you? Hmm? No, no, no. Questions will be different, yeah. <laughs> questions will be different. So, two things... Uh, which you think the dealer should do, and let's not take the, the answers which he has. We talked about on manpower. Do you two things dealer should do to drive enhancing customer experience, and it excludes the two points which he mentioned. So, <laughs> so he he mentioned that you are the owner of the brand, and if you have that uh, thing, you will attract if you are passionate on it. And you want to make a difference in the person's life. So two things which you think the dealer should do to drive customer experience. Okay. But both are equally important. You may have great number of people, but the capacity for one individual to handle the number of leads is limited. And second thing is, uh, you know, having the quality of people also. So I think a combination of both is extremely crucial because ultimately it's your salesperson who's uh, handling the consumer. So. I think that is uh, the first part, uh, which I feel is the, okay. the okay. first starting point. Um, and, and the second thing I would say, uh, you know, he needs to create a culture mm. where everybody feels the owner of the of, of custodian. And there are few dealerships which do it beautifully. Okay. I, I mean, they... But it's the they, same thing which is mentioned in some sense. Okay. Because, yeah. So, so I, I think the a great... Ownership. Culture, I think that's coming out really yeah. loud and clear. Yeah. The ownership. Who Amongst, drives it? Uh, no, each and every person should own the, uh, he should feel like, you know, he's part of... Uh, but it starts the, from the top. Yeah, it start, he creates the culture. The, mm. That person, he, he or she, she, he, he or she, careful. yes. He, and she he or she <laughs> creates the culture of the <laughs> dealership. So I think the, these two uh, things. Uh, uh, okay, okay. 
Now coming to uh, manufacturers. So we'll come to you, Mr. Anand. Manufacturers, two things they should do to drive customer experience. As a manufacturer, uh, first ex adopt technology, whether manufacturer or the retailer. Okay, adopt technology. We have to accept that technology can drive productivity and efficiency. Okay. I have experienced that there is a lot of, and I am talking as a manufacturer, but a front-facing side of the manufacturer. We feel a lot of resistance to accept technology and when we find a lot of resistance to accept technology in our trade, mm. we also start resisting it. Okay. So I have, my experience has been that in our anxiety to... You can't copy the same idea. You, what has worked in the past cannot be worked in the future. A lot of people have that not mindset. Not really. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that when I experience resistance from my trade, which is my network, okay. right? My first priority is, dhanda kam ho jayega, hmm. right? Can I find a shortcut? Can we manage? Okay, so no shortcuts. Right? Can we manage? And in that process, technology adoption gets retarded. Okay. And that short circuits the whole thing. So that's one thing. Second yeah, so thing. we should start accepting technology, adopting it faster. Okay, and second... Can I give a pass? <laughs> yeah, we yeah. come to you. Yeah. So you said technology, the manufacturer's technique and temperament is important. In, is important. Is important from the, that perspective. Is a, that is temperament side. Uh -huh. And on the other side, some part of it is already happening on the second question. That uh, uh, forecasting, like we said, has never been very good. Sure. Now, assuming that technology is accepted, mm -hmm. it is accepted quality of forecast goes up. Quality of forecast goes up, there are X number of trims, so NCR, that problem with Hardeep spoke about, Jyoti spoke about, will remain because that is inherent to the business model. But that will drive probably better modularity on the manufacturing side. Okay. Because modularity is something that the manufacturing industry has been working on. Mm -hmm. In two-wheeler context, can we have uh, different engine capacity on the same line, scooter and motorcycle on the same line? Right? That happens in commercial vehicles as well, it, ha it happens in cars as well. Right? So that modularity also will, and modularity leads to efficiency. Okay. So, so when we are talking of customer experience, there are a lot of forces which are acting. So you know, it's like, a, it's a jigsaw puzzle. A lot of things have to fall in place if customer experience has to fall in place to drive these vehicles. In. Coming to, I mean, you have dealt with the government. The key question, you have to be careful, I know you are diplomatic enough. <laughs> Two things which you think the government should do which if it does, it will drive customer experience. Which can govern sometimes decisions, policies, the way they are done, the way they are implemented, also becomes a bottleneck to drive customer experience. The first one is about empathy, understanding. Uh, so how will government do empathy? They have, I mean, everybody has in the, in the, in the all the stakeholders have a, a key role to understand the expectations, right? If you come with a pre prejudiced mindset, mm -hmm. uh, then you are enforcing something that is either copy and paste mm -hmm. or you are trying to do something that mm -hmm. you think is right mm -hmm. without understanding what the ground reality is. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, for most governments, uh, for most successful governments, uh, the most important thing mm -hmm. is to understand uh, what what is the re need of the hour. Mm -hmm. And that's why I take on empathy. The second one is of course uh, the right set of information. Hmm. which is also leading to basically deciding hmm. these uh, points uh, is about you know understanding what is my country hmm. what is the need of the hour and what i need to do to to take it to the next level okay that's what i'm coming from so i think uh, the right set of information if it is available i think any government would like to make the right choices there is no intention to make a bad governance hmm. Everybody comes and with some consistency of the policies also is important. Uh, more than that, longevity. 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 Because for, longevity. for all of us, any product uh, life cycle is no no less than five to six years. Okay, so you can't uh, you can't switch on and switch okay, off. Okay, yeah. so that's something. Yeah. Now coming to Hardeep, uh, training is being talked of a lot, hmm? and we have had these training, classroom trainings, digital trainings, but somehow people still feel the training there is are challenges and they think. Two things which you think could be done in training which could raise it to the next level. 
Okay. Uh, first thing is, uh, you know, we need to make trainings much simpler, which is, uh, you know, rather than overloading mm. uh, uh, the people, as I said, you know, they are not the best of the minds who are selling. Mm. You need to give them, uh, you know, bullet points. Mm. Let's say, you know, when you are, uh, when, when consumer comes, he has done a lot of research mm. and mm. he just want to validate his decision. Mm. He says, you know, how's your car better than this, okay. right? You need to have five simple, points, simple. five simple points. And, th and that has to be at a trim level. Because you, you can't say, you know, you can't compare your top trim and say So they that say, you know, if you design something like that, you your intensity or your the knowledge has to be much sharper. Yeah, that's something right. Something simple. So again, you know, he doesn't need to remember everything because if there are five trims of yours and five of competition for him to immediately know. But the first thing is to give him that tool. That five things how your product is better than that. You Because if you overload with the, because a car has some, uh, you know, specs, 200 specs. But you can't uh, make him understand 200 specs or, uh, you know, he can't compare. You have to tell him five big things which are there is in your product versus that. So how do you simplify that and simplify. give it in a Simpli capsule simplify, form simplify. To, so that he, uh, you know, really understands mm. it? You want to make it Maggie two-minute noodle? Exactly. Huh? Okay. Yeah. And, and second yeah. thing is how quickly he can retrieve. How do you make those modules where he can quickly? So how, uh, one is the content. The second is the... Uh, which tool, to tool how quickly he can retrieve that okay. which so that he can you know okay. do it in a fastest possible uh, manner okay. yeah. and hmm. coming to you know there's a lot of talk of digitization and a lot of people saying you know google will come this digitization but there are still challenges because dealers when i hear they say sir digitization our cost of business is going up because you're not giving up old things so if digitization really has to improve productivity and even reduce cost how can that be done? What do you use your wish list? What is your thing you think the opportunities are? See, again, uh, as I said earlier, I think it is, if you see the relationship between us and uh, dealer, together I think we have to deliver the consumer experience. Consumer experience is delivered as a combination, as a team. It is not delivered by any single entity. Mm. Uh, one of the important, uh, I think we have been always measuring consumer experience from NPS or OSAT or CSAT and all that scores. I think, in my view, I think it is very important. If we look, see, really want to have dealer engaged in this, has to be based on the, I think, delta of consumer experience divided by delta cost. If we can make that, make them understand that by spending, uh, or sort of whether it is technology, whether it is digitalization, if we can, dealer can sort of spend X, whatever yes. delta more, can result in better CX. Okay. And that CX ultimately is what? It's all, we have always learned CX ultimately leads to revisit, repurchase, reference and all that stuff. And that relationship in terms of cost is what dealer understands. And I think if we can I think achieve that, I think that will sort of promote or encourage dealers to adopt technology faster and sort of go to digitalization. I think that's, I think in my view, okay. uh, is the way to make them understand because they understand only the language oh, of language money. Is that's the only way. So CX per Our cost. Is too better. CX is per too cost, better. yeah. Uh, coming to you, uh, now, when we're talking of the external forces uh, which are acting, uh, you know, finance is there, insurance is there, exchange is there. Uh, you wish, so, how do you, what is your wish list? Because ultimately, the customer experience is not only based on what you and your dealerships does, but it is also dependent on a lot of the external, these, whether it's an insurance company or finance company or exchange company, which can be part of the system, may not be part. So, what is your wish list? How can it, that be improved? Finance is one part which is, you know, looks like that little more area of improvement is available because mm -hmm. all the finance companies has different yardstick in terms of evaluating the customers and that is why even the rate of interest or EMI or the overall charges being levied on to the customer is completely different. So if we have some kind of a standardization available and that to a digital so that at least if a customer is visiting to any of the showroom, he can identify and have a very transparent fair, impartial and transparent. But you kind know, of they are nationalized banks, they are private banks, they are NBFCs, so they also have different dynamics. Different, completely so, different so because it is purely dependent upon the customer's profile, depending upon the Sibyl mm -hmm. score of if it is 600, mm -hmm. despite of this fact, so they will definitely... So there is a lot of dissonance on that count, generally. Yes. So, so that is something which is, you know, uncontrollable kind of. Mm -hmm. So maybe some opportunity wherein we can uh, st standardize this entire okay, finance so finance system. is one thing done. Anything else? Exchange has become a big element. Is it an element which is, because also 
Whether exchange, it, you use ex- yes, uh. because exchange right now the change of ownership becomes an issue, especially for the two wheeler business. And if you have to go with the proper process, mm. it becomes very very difficult for a customer to actually change the vehicle. So they all depends upon the third party people. Mm. So that is also one area wherein we can improve. Though at HMSI we already started, you know, concept of best deal wherein. our own existing dealers only start having this kind of a setup wherein the exchange happens and they facilitate the customers to exchange to the new one okay. but this is one area also yes where we can definitely look at in terms of how to improvise and give the better experience to the customer okay. so the you have handled after sales very successfully you were known as a after sales master in the industry and a lot of people say that experience as reference <coughs> reference or you may say even repeat purchase of after sales what are things because of after the vehicle is sold the entire journey actually starts the even the the dealer's profitability model starts after that so what are two things which needs to be done to drive customer experience which will help sales through the post sales area so uh, okay i i agree you know the quality of service would decide upon how the trajectory of the sales will be and referral repeat uh, they all play a big role part of uh, the answer would lie with the customer himself you know as a customer my customer experience is great if i am in control of my experience and when i say this is uh, if as a industry the information of the customer and what he wants from the after sales service is actually in his control that will give him uh, that will you know okay that's a please him elate him uh, when i say this is and most of us are trying i think everybody in the in the in the industry and us as well at reno that information of all his data uh, servicing is available to him one but then it has to go beyond when should he come to the service should also be known to him without any external interruptions when he has to take an appointment should also happen on its own through all those apps you know now technology and adoption of technology can help in this bit where the customer becomes the real controller of his own after sales experience and that can help you know build up a a rapport with a brand uh, okay. which can which can enhance his uh, intent to repurchase and go back to the brand so apart from the physical experiences you know which we all talk about in in you know so that's one part which has to be reinforced having giving data giving uh, to the customer uh, his own you know control of the after sales experience uh, the second part is more related i would say to the to the workforce inside uh, why i say that is because if we see within the dealership the the more glamour is in the sales part glamour, uh, glamour. <laughs> that's how that's how external world would look at you know the sales person whom we are saying you know the socio economic factors further set into as we go further deeper into the workshop front first the front office then the technicians and then the body shop okay and so if if as uh, i think we were talking about it if we are able to inculcate a sense of pride in association with a dealership brand first and then of course the overall brand that should drive inherently you know passion to learn whatever we are trying to and and hence deliver to the expectations of the customer i think two parts one from the customer point of view the other from the from the workforce so, so point of view before we come to the sum up we'll have you arun to so we need to look on that you heard everybody's voice and your company is focusing on customer solutions or sure. solutions to drive productivity efficiency satisfaction so after what you heard from it how does your cast company fit into this entire thing i think okay. you so 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 i am changing the, i keep changing the question but my sure. second round of the question before so Fair. pardon me for that so i i think so, so, someone asked me before this saying dude what are you doing here because and initially people said you know arun you also be a panelist and i said no i am not sitting in the panel uh, you know i know my place uh, there's nothing that i can add the way you guys are adding but where we really come from is that uh, you know so like you i worked in the us i worked in europe and i said i want to come back uh, you know start up something be an entrepreneur back in india and uh, so we initially started a learning tech company where we did a lot of work with 
uh, you know, CXO, CEOs, business heads, where we try to help them understand the hard and soft skills of running a business. And, uh, you know, then it flowed back. He says, senior managers liked what we did. Then they said, why don't you work with middle managers? Then when it came to sales, we realized that the way people on the ground learn and perceive learning is not the same as what, uh, let's say, the management team looks at it. And, uh, uh, and about four or five years ago, we said, you know, let's do something for people on the front line. We said, mobile learning it is. And we rolled out mobile learning modules. And, uh, you know, first two days were amazing. People did these modules. We rolled it out with a few of our clients, pilots, and it went off very well. And after two days, it just dropped off. And, you know, as good corporate citizens, you call them up and say, what kya hua? Learning kyo nahi hua? Module kyo nahi karo? Blah, blah. And, uh, and people had a lot of excuses. And, yeah, customer have we, you know, I don't have time. Ghumta rehta hum pura din, blah, blah. And when we went on the field, spent time with people there, you know, across different industries, what we saw was everybody had about like one or two hours a day where they would have nothing to do. And they can actually spend time learning, but people didn't. And, you know, at the end of the day, you become friends, part with, sai, you know, Chai Sutta. And when we asked them, saying, was what happened? Why, why is this not appealing to you? Because this is going to help you get your incentive. All the logical conversations, you know, you put in front of them. And uh, they looked at me and said, yaar, ye gyan mat do aap. Ye sab to pata hi hai mujhe. And that's when we realized that, you know, the logical part didn't work. And people on the field wanted something that they could use today, tomorrow. If you can give them something that they can use today, tomorrow, you're like, you know, you understand their pain, etc. But to them, and for them, learning and training was always a separate track. It's like, uh, you know, it's it's like a biryani holiday kind. Haan, training aega, lunch milega, bahar jayenge, hotel, and then I'll come back. And people didn't really correlate what they're going to learn with customer or this. And, and for us, we always saw that agency problem where, you know, the motives of the person who's down selling and the motives of, let's say, a dealer or the motives of the brand are not always aligned. You know, in very few cases they align. Maybe in like 10% of the cases, those dealerships do very well, those brands do very well. But the tail is very long. In sales is what we realize that, uh, you know, to get them aligned is very difficult. So that's where we started doing, uh, we looked at it saying, hey, how can you look at enabling these people to sell better? Uh, and the current tools that they used were all like management tools, really. You know, you say, Haan, ye form bharo aap. give me more information on what's happening. Tell me what did the customer want? And people didn't find any value in that because I don't get anything by filling that form. I already know if a customer is a hot lead and they want it, I will kind of go after them and I'll close it. I know how to get my incentives. So don't, you know, you're asking for a lot of data and it's, it, it, it became a lot of garbage in garbage. I know there's a lot of streamlining that companies did, but it became garbage in garbage. So our question was to say, how are you really going to, uh, you know, help this person look like an expert in front of the customer by making their life easy and not really talking about this. And when we spoke about, uh, you know, I think you were talking about getting the right information at the right time. So one of the questions that we had was, hey, what new information are we taking? And we realized all the information that is needed is already available with the brands. Mm. So the question was to say, how are you going to make it easy for this guy to give the right information to the client? And when, you know, especially when you spoke about, uh, you know, you, you spoke about, you know, making it relevant, making it, and we call it bite-sized. Mm. You say, how are you getting it? So we also realized it's not just about giving the information, but also how do you close the loop with the customer? For example, can there be a way where, let's say if a customer specifically came in and said, yeah, uh, you know, there is a turbo here and there's a turbo there. Both are 1.5 liter engines, but you seem to be giving more power. What What is there? So you know, one thing which I'm getting from you, and this is something out, the thing global, there are certain global concepts which are there and certain concepts which you know of. But how do you tailor make it or how do you learn on a day-to-day -day basis and based on that learning, based on the experience, based on the insight, you make it more and more relevant for the dealership, for the person, front-end person to become more productive and if you become more productive and if the experience should drive better, then that experience journey and that productivity journey go hand in hand. Because it's coming, you're driving something from his heart, which is there also along with it. More than a heart, I think we are looking at saying, how do you make it Use, useful for this person. So that, that's because, because, because then that drives a lot of things. So for a lot example, of things which happens is that you know if you really feel that this is good for you, you'll go out of the way to do it, which is there. Yeah. So and what we also realized is that you can't force a single way of selling on people because the same product is sold differently by different people to the same customer. So that's also a person. And everybody has seen success in their way of selling. Yeah, and and just to add, you know, uh, we spoke about training. It's uh, so these guys are not very organized. Right. Uh, just to give you example, I see every day people are asking, can you send me that uh, this particular car in this particular color because the customer wants to see it. 
now we have given them all the colors everything they so have so. it but you know they don't want to go back and check it it's very easy for them to just post so. something on the group and ask for the information so you have to have somebody ready who says okay bing uh, here you you want this here you go you want this here you go so if you have somebody it's so for them the training is on the go and every day you have to s- understand so, you know what are the issues they are facing and you keep on giving them bites so that they continue to learn from so that. you know what you hardeep you said i i think it's been a very fascinating discussion yeah. and uh, arun has also given a perspective i think the whole journey is you can't rest on your past laurels there are a lot of experiences which you have a lot of findings which you have but you need to continuously keep to innovate and what umesh t- talked of also is that how do you start envisioning the future that sometimes is more important sometimes if you learn from the past only i mean it doesn't happen i mean you shared that you you could have started from the most premium end you started from the three year end which is there so how do you learn from that entire thing uh, and uh, we can make it so in udmesh uday i would say they would say uh, how do you learn from it and do further but i think what is coming out very clearly is that for driving customer experience there is no one solution there are various pieces which are important of the jigsaw puzzle but they need to synchronize with each other well so that the customer experience can do so and that is also a continuous cycle that's the experience and that's the learning which we had so thank you all the panelists for a very very informative and insightful discussion i know we have shot out of time but we lose track of time when we are in a engrossing discussion thank you very much thank you